right, looks like we are live. What's up, everybody? Jeff Bannock here with Cade Bergman from Joyage, Joyage Kingdom. Uh, he's a into YouTube influencer, NFT um, enthusiast. We could say we're all trying to be experts, but the space is so new. It's like nobody's really an expert in the space. It's we're all just pioneers. Um, but as you guys know, over the last year, I've moved heavily in NFTs. I now launch NFTs and everything and wanted to start collaborating with a lot of other influencers out there, people that uh, really understood the space. And that's one of the things that I loved about Kate is uh, as I watched his uh, YouTube channel was just his insight. I think one of the things I really liked about you, bro, was um, that you understood the game before a lot of people. You know what? I like really what is the NFT, the long game in it, and that there's so much more substance uh, to, or to an NFT beyond a JPEG or even the utilities. There's like the whole community aspect. So before we get into all that, for anyone that doesn't know you, uh, tell everybody a little about yourself and your journey because that's pretty cool too. That was the thing. I was like, this guy's uh -huh. traveling, doing cool shit. Let's get him on the podcast. So Hell yeah. Well, thanks for having me on. And what's up to everybody live? I, I don't know. Uh, I can't see like what the live chat is going on uh, on the Zoom thing, but uh, I appreciate everyone watching. And yeah, so uh, when I when I first got into NFTs, I think the, the main reason I was able to pick up on certain things early is partially because I had a background in just traditional finance. I, I knew how markets worked and uh, just basic fundamental marketing, economics, supply and demand, all that kind of stuff. And I think that's huge, huge, huge for people in the NFT space. A lot of kids who are in here who don't know anything about anything and they think they can just buy a picture, sell a picture, make a million bucks. That's not how anything works. Uh, and so that, that was, that's definitely a big reason, but also uh, I think the, the timing of NFTs, this is, this is similar to like any, any person who's kind of uh, try, attempted something and it worked out was a combination of timing, luck, and then prior building that you had been doing. And so up to that point, I had already had a background in finance. I had a long background in YouTube and making videos for 10 years now, trying to blow up, did doing soccer videos back in the day, tried to do fitness videos, did travel videos. And since the last, um, I think it's probably about a year ago, exactly. I, I quit all my jobs. I had a few thousand bucks in the bank, converted my car into a, into a little mobile home and jumped in and tried to travel the country a little bit, just trying to test myself. And so that whole combination, that six month journey of living in my car, fighting through all these mental battles, breaking through my mental barriers, trying to figure out who I, who I was, find myself, all those things. And then it was pretty crazy because like as that whole thing was happening, I got really invested into NFTs, started to just like completely just forget about everything else, 15 hours a day into NFTs. And when my trip ended, I had kind of like a spiritual thing at the end. I was like, wow, it's all finished. It's crazy. And then I was like, all right, now what? Like I'm kind of done with this. I want to do YouTube, but I'm kind of like this travel thing's over. I kind of fulfilled that little gap of exploration for myself. And then NFTs came along and I think the whole communal aspect of it. And then that combined with my six months of being totally alone, like completely alone, really, really helped me because I was able to pick up on things with the NFT space. I pick up on the brand work and the fact that most projects, I mean, Gary Vee says, now he explains it really well. He's like, what you're trying to do now is bet on who's going to be monster energy, who's going to be Red Bull, who's going to be those big energy drinks. And then who's going to just be whoever at like a random shell gas station. Right. And uh, I don't know about you, but I'd like to be one of those monster Red Bull energy mm -hmm. drinks down the road. I mean, I think right now, um, not to be too comparison, but like we're almost to the point to still, even though it's NFTs are well known, I can say we're almost to the point of Steve Jobs and Apple in the garage back in the day, as far as <laughs> NFTs being so new, you know what I mean? So when you're on traveling, when you're doing, uh, your hiatus, we can call it, or what it discovered yourself was what brought you to do that? Was that literally you're like, F it, I just want to go discover myself, I want to figure it out, or what made you decide to take that leap? Because let's be honest, man, um, I've traveled and to just pull up everything, I'm a minimalist, so I don't have much stuff, but you know, most people do, and to give everything up and just take off, scary. So, what made you really go in on that? So it's, it's great because I document this whole process. I was still making YouTube videos at the time. I had begun podcasting about uh, like maybe a year and a half ago from now. And so this was probably six months after I became that whole extravaganza. Um, about six months prior to that, I had decided YouTube was going to, I was going to make it work for real. I was not going to quit this time. Like I, I'd always try giving up, try giving up and all these things. And this time I was like, no, I, I understand how this game works now. I can actually apply some of the things I know. I'm a little bit older. I've learned some things. I can maybe leverage what I know and, and try and make this work. And so um, I'm working at this restaurant job. I'm making good money, you know, uh, actually great money for a restaurant job. Sure. And I'm still like the money's just 
disappearing from my bank account still. Like, where the hell is the money going? How am I supposed to build this net worth up? I don't get it. Uh, I can't do this forever. I don't want to be in this restaurant forever. I, you know, sure enough, after four or five months, I was sick of it. I didn't want to be there anymore. And I was like, fuck, uh, I don't want to work any of these jobs. What do I, I need to like figure myself out or something like that. And so I, I talked to a few people. They were like, yeah, you should like, you should go travel. And everyone says that you should go travel after college. So I was like, yeah, but like, I need to make money. Like that's, that's the goal here. They're like, well, like you can always make money, but you, you won't always have you know, be fully free of responsibilities. You won't always have this fucking mentality. You won't always be young. Why not just do it now? You can always figure something else in the way. And so I decided uh, van life was, I, I wanted to do van life. I was living in my car or I wasn't in my car. I was living at my parents' house. I kind of felt stuck. And I was just like, I had the, the walls are closing in on me. The time's like sapping away, even though I'm like 23 years old. So I don't know why I was thinking that. Uh, and I still think that all the time. Um, but yeah, I'm sitting there in my house and I'm like, fuck, I, I have no like road to anywhere. What do I want to be? And so I started manifesting in my little journal. I was like, I want to be a YouTuber, but I don't know what I want to do yet. All I know is I'm really good at podcasting. I like this shit. Maybe I'll just start and I'll interview my friends. And one day I'll interview someone who's like a CEO and I won't shit my pants. <laughs> and so that was the goal. Started making the videos. Then I got really obsessed with this van life thing. And I said, okay, I can, I can make this work, but I don't want to buy a van. I don't know if I'm going to like it. So I just transferred the car into a mobile home, did that. And that was like at a point where I was so sick of being uh, comfortable that it was so uncomfortable. And I was like, I cannot be here anymore. I don't want to be in my hometown anymore. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. And after six months of trying about it, thinking about it, listening to Gary Vee yell at me to do it on all his YouTube videos, I was like, okay, I'm quitting. And so I literally uh, drove to, I was supposed to uh, go to a job interview, showed up. The manager was late and I was like, in the parking lot, I have this on video on, the, on my channel. I'm sitting there in my car and I'm like, fuck it. And I just turned around and I just drove out and I left and I said, okay, I've called my other job and I quit. And I was just like, all right, I'm leaving next week. I got to go. Wow. Did you yeah. have any savings or anything at that time? I had like, I had like 3000 bucks cash. Oh, no. And then I had about 10 K in a Coinbase oh, and Voyager no. and stuff like that. But that money went to shit after two weeks into my trip because the market crashed. Sure. And so I was literally broke. I was like, okay, I got two grand and I like thought I was going to be here for like a year, but I guess I'm not. And so halfway through, I just started door dashing. And that's when I started to yeah. learn that I could not to trade all my time for money. I could work my ass off and get more orders and then make more money. I could make like 50 bucks an hour, 40 bucks an hour instead of like 15 an hour. And that was kind of like when my mind really started to get going. I was like, okay, I can, I can leverage other things other than my time for money. And then, uh, and then NFT somehow just happened after that. So, we, oh, that's like a perfect transition. First of all, anybody watching, thanks a lot for watching. Go ahead, ask in the comments if you are if you have questions, if you're watching live, give us hashtag live. If you're watching replay, give us hashtag replay. Um, so that transition, like in NFTs, like what was the what was the spark, man? What was the thing that made it happen? So I've been watching Journey Crypto, Elio Trades, Alex Becker, these big time YouTube people who talk right. about crypto. I've been watching Graham Stephan, Andre Jick, the traditional finance people. And I heard, I heard, I heard Tony, who's um, a friend now, which is crazy because he's like one of the biggest guys on the YouTube platform for, for crypto and stuff. And he's the biggest holder of board apes in the world or something like that. He's got like a hundred wow. board apes. I don't even know. How, I don't even want to know how many millions of dollars that is. Wow. And so I remember he was making YouTube videos. I was really following crypto at that time. The market has, I think at that point, the market had already crashed. So crypto is kind of boring. No wonder really, everyone's kind of just down about it. And I just heard him mention board apes once or twice. And I was, I was like, uh, I don't know. I got to figure the crypto thing out first. I got to figure out what's going on. How do I set myself up for crypto, 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 crypto. And then I heard him mention board apes like one or two more times. Then I saw him make a tweet about it. I heard Alex Becker uh, like mention NFTs a couple times. And I was like, ah, I just, I just figured out this crypto thing, bro. Like, I don't want to figure it. Like, what is this picture thing? Like, why, why would anyone pay two Ethereum or one Ethereum for a, for a ape picture? And it was, it was ludicrous in my head. That's how much they were at the time. I remember looking at them up and I was just like, all right, well, it's too late. I already missed the boat. You know, I'm just like, oh, but um, yeah, I, I missed that boat. And uh, a few weeks later, I think I was I was traveling and uh, I was driving into a national park and I watched a video. I believe it was Alex Becker. And he said something about Doge Pound. And I remember Dogecoin, which right. was my initial launch into crypto because I just bought it by as a joke and I ended up making $15,000 off of it. Just nice. Total bullshit. And I uh, just got lucky off that. And I was like, oh, Dogecoin. I remember that. And uh, he was talking about Doge Pound. I was like, okay, maybe I could like roll with that. And so I pulled over on the side of the highway, literally on the way to a national park, pulled out my phone, downloaded a, an OpenSea account or whatever, got in, started looking around. And I was like, oh, these pictures are kind of cool. Bought a couple people on Twitter. And then I bought an NFT for like 400 or like 200 bucks. Right. And then as soon as I bought that NFT, it was like 
Oh my God. I've never taken a big drug or anything like that, but like, <laughs> I imagine that's what it's similar to. Cause I was like, Oh shit, <laughs> this is not going to end anytime soon. I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm in this world. <laughs> so what is now, what is your goal? Like that was what about like six months ago, roughly? That was, uh, that was probably June of last year. Okay. So it's been oh, almost a year now, or close to your about eight, yeah. eight, nine months. So I've seen a lot of change in your channel too. You've, you've been trying some stuff out. You've got yeah. a four minute route. Um, you were doing the uh, brutal honesty route for a while, or, which was actually pretty good because that clickbait, I mean, not, it wasn't clickbait, but it, it caught my attention. When, so kudos to you for, uh, you know, using the algorithm to your advantage. But what are you trying to do now with your channel? What do you want? I mean, what's what's down the what's down the road for you, man? You're like 23. You still got a shitload of time. So, but still, yeah. what's your what's your dreams here? So, what, one of my biggest inspirations is Lex Fridman, Gary V, and mainly because the way they approach their content and the way they want to change the world, they realize that you can't change the whole world. You can just impact what you can impact, and you can put out what you can put out, and other people can decide what they want to do with that. But Lex Fridman's out there putting consistent content, high quality content, literally almost every single day. Right. And I love podcasts. I've always loved podcasts. It's my favorite form of content to watch. Very, uh, just, I love everything about podcasting. I've watched Joe Rogan for a long time. I've watched a bunch of people who've done podcasts. I've also studied all these YouTubers go from their little niche of whatever it was to growing and growing and growing to build a, a worldwide brand. And so I've studied that for the past 10 years, like literally just watching people, even like vloggers uh, come into their own, become streamers, become podcasters, become all these bigger, bigger people. And so I watched all these people, but Lex Ribbon for me, uh, Rogan just, so all those people, I'm, I'm looking to knock them off the pedestal and become at the top of the podcast game. And so for me, the most important content is my um, like connecting with, with CEOs, founders of companies, anyone who I can just network with and meet people who are in the space doing things other than just uh, flipping projects. I mean, flipping projects is fine, but I'm looking for people who are trying to do something because they, myself and a lot of people like yourself as well, realize this NFT world is some is the beginning of something big. And it's the first time for a lot of people that they've actually gotten early. I remember right before NFTs happened, I was watching crypto videos thinking, God damn it, if I had just been five years earlier, I could have spent a crypto channel and I would have right. had my thing. And I, I'm good at making videos. I still don't know what to make them about. And so then NFTs came about and I was like, oh, wait, I'm, I'm like really early. I can do this. And I was like, I already know a lot of stuff about NFTs and I can uh, I can come in with a different perspective. I don't have to do promos right? because I have a long term vision anyway. I want to be a YouTuber anyway. Um, but I don't want to be an NFT YouTuber. I want to be a YouTuber who can do whatever he wants and post whatever he wants and to have that brand. And so that's kind of where I was at there. And so I still do all, the, I still have all my series that I started in the beginning. I still keep up with those, um, I, but I've, I've gone through all of the projects. Like I've done Brutally Honest Reviews on almost every single project that's worth anything. And so I still do them. Um, I have like Brutally Honest Reviews, Brutally Honest Updates for projects that I reviewed six months ago. Right. Um, I have my podcast, which are really fun. I have my strategy videos. I have, um, I don't know, my, my podcasts are my favorite and they they perform really well because they, I think they like the vibe. I also, um, I don't know. I, I just study podcast hosts and I've, I have a couple live stream that I do every single week. One with Tom every Wednesday, tea time with Tom. And we right. talk about what happened in NFTs and it's just fun. It's just, it's casual. And so I, I would say podcasting is the long, long-term goal, but in the short to midterm, it's just to build my brand of the joyous kingdom, the brand of rolling the dice in yourself, trying it out, seeing what happens, because that's literally what happened in that video from, from a year ago, I said on a podcast, I have my mic right here. And I was like, all right, I just quit everything. I'm about to leave next week. This is either the worst decision of my life and I'm going to look back and say, fuck me, or this was the best thing ever. And my life is about to start. And I don't know what's going to happen, but we'll see. And like, literally that's what it was. And it was just rolling the dice. I didn't have all the answers. And now this is where I'm at. And I'm like, that's literally how everything in life is. And NFTs are very similar. NFT markets very much replicate the world. You know, something big happens. Everyone freaks out over it. Will Smith punched Chris Rock in the face. Oh my God. <laughs> and a week later, nobody gives a shit. Now it's all about Jack Sparrow being in court. And it's like, right. who the fuck, like, it's just crazy. <laughs> awesome. So envision in three years from now, you're wanting to become the next younger version of Gary Vee to put it to TLDR. Is that <laughs> maybe not Gary Vee only because Gary Vee, uh, he's, he's built that brand over 20 years. So I think a 20 year vision would be something like Gary Vee or Rogan or Lex Fridman. Uh, but in the short to midterm, it would just be to grow the brand, to be a YouTuber. I, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm hoping, expecting to be at a million within three years. Um, I've seen some of the biggest crypto channels blow up from 40K to 700K in one year. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm better at making content and I make a wider range of content. I should be able to do this. NFTs are a bigger uh, industry, in my opinion, in the next three years than crypto ever will be. And so I'm like, okay, if a crypto channel 
can blow up during a bull run from uh, and grow up 700,000 followers. If I'm one of the biggest and baddest NFT creators and we have a real NFT expansion when Coinbase comes in and 13 million people come into the industry or whatever, it's over. I mean, it's, it's literally over. So that's that's my thought process there. And then hopefully branch from NFTs. And I'm always every single week pumping out content that doesn't have anything to do with NFTs. Sometimes I'll relate them to NFTs. But mm-hmm. I made a podcast the other day talking literally about like death and like misery and all these like random other things that are more philosophical based. So right. Very cool, man. Yeah, I I mean, I feel the same way. I saw over and I was like, even though you watch Gary Vee or Elio or Alex or any of these guys, there's really no one showing you like the steps of really how to launch an NFT from like inception to, to actually marketing and everything. And and that's what I saw. I saw a huge need for that. I'm like, um, just like you, I'm like, why can't I be that guy? You know what I mean? There's no one doing it now. So why can't I be the guy? So that's what I'm trying to do now. Um, but with that being said, what do you feel is the biggest mistake? This I'm going to find this very interesting. When people come into the space, um, especially NFTs, what's the biggest mistake like a newbie makes that you can help with a group that's watching now? Like, hey, avoid this, or this is the wrong mindset. Yeah, no, I, I so my my uh, my Discord is where a lot of those first que- first questions come in because um, I have so, I have so many videos on my channel. I don't even know where people come from. Usually, when they come into my Discord, I have no idea what video they came from or where they came from or why. And so uh, I can tell when, when they came and they probably saw one video about a viral uh, project, maybe it was imaginary ones or visible friends or hate beasts. And they just saw the name, they watched the video and they went to the discord. And so typically the first question is, Hey, I'm new. What do I buy? And I'm like, okay, all right. You need to go through my entire FAQ sheet. So I made one, I made a whole FAQ sheet with like 10 bullet points, all with videos linked on my YouTube channel, where I specifically talked about that certain thing. A lot of people say, Hey, I, I listed 25 NFTs. None of them are selling. What did I do wrong? And I'm like, well, you didn't, you didn't, why would they buy them? And they're like, well, what do you mean? And I'm like, okay, watch this video. Cause I made a video on it. And so I would think when they, when they come in and they don't know the answers and they ask immediately what the answer is, that's the biggest mistake because you can figure it out. That's like the biggest, I mean, you literally can figure like, how else did we, any of us get here? When I was, when I started in, July, in May or June or whatever it was, if I had a problem with MetaMask, nobody had YouTube videos on that. So it was like, you figure it out, you get in discord, you jump in telegrams, you try and ask people about it if you can. But now there's people making content about it. So you can just Google it and figure it out. But people come in, they just like want someone to do the work for them. And so that's a little bit, uh, not so much annoying, but so it's an issue because that kind of mentality typically leads to the next step, which is, hey, all right, I'm going to buy this. And then you ask them why, and they literally can't tell you because they don't know what, they don't know who the founders are. They don't know anything about the project. They're like, oh, well, they have 500,000 followers on Twitter. And I'm like, okay, look at their last 10 posts. They're all whitelist giveaways. They all have 20,000 entries because people just might as well. And I'm like, that's not really building a brand. That's just people jumping onto a bandwagon. Yeah, I have to agree. I think that um, a lot of times it's, it's. I don't want to like talk down anyone, but it's like a lazy mentality. The, the, you know, it's like they want to be spoon fed it. Mm-hmm. And then afterwards they go all in on something. They can't figure out why it didn't work out. Like, um, I think that's very important. So when it comes to launching, um, what has been your, have you t- tried to launch an NFT yet? Have you, what's been your experience with that? Yeah, well, let me hit on that last bit that you said yeah, yeah. there with, with people who um who come in. What I've noticed is that it's mainly younger kids who, who come in, like, I don't, know, I don't know how old, like, I don't know what the youngest you can be, like, say, 13 to, like, 20. Those kids are the ones who are asking those questions. Mm-hmm. And I think it's really important for those kids. And that's why uh, with my channel, I, I try as much as I can to make, uh, make learning cool. Like, I try and uh, make entertainment educational. And right. so that's how I try and do it. And I want it to be that you can also feel cool while doing research because it's not cool. And growing up, it wasn't cool for me either. It was, I was always the kid who was doing homework and giving it to people because I thought it would make me cooler. Um, but people who are new, they, they should want to do that research because it puts you in a better spot. If you're the guy who knows or you're the girl who knows, right. it's like, all right, well, that's what's paying now. Like now, nowadays, it's gamers who are the cool people. Five years ago, you were not cool if you were gaming. <laughs> 10 years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you were a straight up loser if you were right. gaming. And so it's 100%. different. And if you were a karate kid, you're doing martial arts, you, it was over. You're getting bullied every single day. But now MMA is big. Everyone wants to be MMA and karate. Um, so, so times change. But um, in relate to your next question with, with um, Lots of Random Project, I have two collections, but they're art focused. They were never meant to be collection collections, like the 10K stuff. Sure. I dropped them in like July. It was right when I got started. And at that point, the only reason I dropped them is because there was a massive photography wave that happened. I'm a self-portrait photographer. When I was traveling, nice. I took all these great photos. And I remember I love silhouettes. I love black and white photos. And I was like, damn, it's too bad. Nobody cares about that. And then 
Alex Becker put out a tweet and said, this black and white nice is going to blow up. And I looked at it and I was like, I'm a photographer. And so I was like, oh, like those pictures are pretty cool, but I don't think people are going to buy black and white. And at that point, all I wanted to do was flip stuff. I didn't understand the concept of like collecting art. And so I just skipped out on it. The next day, of course, it flew out to like five ETH or something like that. So I missed out and I was like, okay. And then I thought, oh shit, there's a market for that. And that guy's pictures are phenomenal, but mine are also phenomenal. And they're in a very different category. And I was like, this might work. I'm, I've been making travel content. I can leverage that content, leverage my story and maybe sell, sell travel photography. And so I put the collection up uh, and I was shilling. I was jumping on these Twitters. I was jumping into discourse, talking about it. And one day I was DoorDash. I, I think I made two sales just randomly here and there. I think it was listed for 0.03 ETH, like literally like 80 bucks. And that's how I listed all of them. It was all 20 were like a 0.03. And then this is the weirdest shit ever. I'm door dashing, trying to make that bag. I got a pizza next to me from Domino's and I got a, I, like a, a cookies and cream cookie ice cream sundae thing from like whatever ice cream shop. And I'm sitting there, I'm about to take the orders out and I got a ding on my phone. It's like, ding. And I was like, oh, you're open. So your item is sold. And I was like, yes, let's go. I sold, I sold. And I put my phone down to, um, to like put the stuff in the bag. And then I put it in there, bing. And I was like, oh my God, I sold another one. This is wild. And then I go to pick up my phone to type in the maps. I'm like, mm-hmm. all right, I'm going to go drop these food off. Bing, 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 bing. And I was just like, oh my God, oh my God. And it's like, bing, bing, email, email, email. email. And uh, within like 30 seconds, all 20 has sold. And I was like, what just Very happened? Cool, and cool. I went on Twitter and I found out that the guy whose project I skipped out on, the photographer, <laughs> bought my NFT and tweeted about it. And I was like, oh, wow. holy shit. So it was crazy. And now we're friends. And it's crazy. It's crazy how that worked out. But that was the story of my first collection. It's just absolutely insane. Very cool, man. That's uh, yeah, that's super cool. I, I myself love photography. Back in the day, I actually used to dodge and burn and have the enlarger and all the like before the digital shit all the time, <laughs> a little bit older. So, um, so you said something interesting then. Um, you said you originally got in sort of flipping, you know, and I think a lot of people six to eight months ago that was super common. Um, I feel now, and I'd love to know your thought on this. That like the days of getting in for, for low money are really sort of gone now as far as being a flipper. It feels like there's something floating there. Um, <laughs> it feels like that. Um, and this is why I try and tell most people. And uh, this is something I want your input on that you need usually about anywhere from like really eight to 10 grand if you want to start flipping now, because realistically, you're not going to get you. I mean, unless you have a ton of time, you're probably not going to get on a white list. You're not going to beat the bots in the public sale. Um, so you're going to have to buy secondary market. You're going to buy it low. Let's say it's half an ETH a th- or a thousand bucks. You're going to, I don't know about you, but I personally, when I do invest in NFTs or buy NFTs, I like to buy three. So I can have one to sell, two to, to well. sell and one to keep me in the project, recoup my value, you know. But with that, if they're a thousand bucks each, that's three grand right there. You're going to have to get in like three to four projects minimum to hit one that's going to moon because the other ones are going to fall to shit. So mm-hmm. even if it's four projects, three grand, that's 12K right there. So um, please tell me what your thoughts on all that is. Yeah, when I when I started with NFTs, I think I liquidated everything I owned and just said, fuck it again, fuck it. I'm just going to try this. And so you're I like took me, all my money out. Into. You're like, fuck <laughs> it, I'm going to, this is how yeah. I got with this first tattoo. I was like, fuck oh, it, I'm hell yeah. on ClickFunnels. <laughs> like, yeah, I actually got this tattoo. It's a funnel hacking tattoo from ClickFunnels. Before okay. I ever got any of these awards or anything, I was this was like a promise to me I'd either do something great in ClickFunnels or be some fucking weirdo with a ClickFunnels statue. So luckily it's uh, hilarious. You know, the first one. But anyway, yeah, what's your what's your uh, intake on that? Yeah, so um, well, that's funny. Actually, I got these tattoos on my fingers to close out any possibility of working a nine to five because immediately I walk into a job interview, they, <laughs> they kick me out as soon as I see my tattoos. So that's half the reason I got That's actually the main reason I got those tattoos. Um, and so there's also a promise to me. I was like, joy, just going to work. That's my brand. It's going to work one day. It will be huge. Otherwise it'll look stupid on my fingers. There's no, like, there's no, there's no other way to do this. It's got to happen. Uh, and it's the same with the money thing, uh, with the, with the NFTs. I took all my money out, even my, even liquidated retirement savings. I didn't have a ton, but I even took out everything from my Roth IRA, like everything. And I said, all right, this is Chuck E. Cheese money. Now this is Ethereum, but it's Chuck E. Cheese money. I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm going to try and make money. But I want to be here in the NFT space. And I think the second I decided I was going to be a content creator about it is when I really flip-flopped from trying to make money to saying, okay, this is now uh, trial and error money to figure out everything and figure out every loophole and everything to know that there is about the NFT world. Because it's not just flipping. There's a whole variety of different areas in the industry. So I was like, this this is my opportunity to figure this shit out 
and be like an expert at this. Cause I'm not an expert. I'm like, I'm not going to get a PhD. I'm not even going to get a master's degree from my college. I can't afford that shit. I don't want to go back to school. I was like, I already did the college thing. I don't want to go back. <laughs> so I was like, I, there's other ways to get smart. So there's other ways to earn your way into the industry. It's like, what's his name? Uh, there's a lot of people who are famous and uh, maybe they have a podcast show, but they didn't like go ahead and get a PhD. Some people go the PhD route and that's how, that's how they get their, um, their people like Lex Fridman went that route. Uh, but there's other people who are in the space who talk to just as amazing people who don't have those types of credentials. And I was like, I, I like the way that I can kind of control the way I learn and figure things out myself. And even though it's expensive, it's kind of like, I'm going to drop my own uh, money in here to figure it out. At least it feels like I have more control. So I'm not just giving it to some entity and then they have control over, I have all control. So I took all my money out, bought into a bunch of projects, figured out stuff within like three weeks. I realized this is not easy at all. It's very fucking hard. Right. Um, and most of the, most of the big investments you make are going to take a while. So yeah, I would say for people who are getting in, if you really don't know anything about NFTs, you're going to have to just kiss away five grand immediately. You're going to have to waste $5,000 probably to figure out what you're doing. And then you can start, then you can probably start the bag of like one or 2000, but realistically, like you should, you should have at least in your net worth over $20,000 and you shouldn't mm -hmm. be using 20,000. You should be using like five yeah. and uh, have that backup. A lot of people come in, they drop their money because they have rent due next week. And they only have 300 and they need 900. So they drop 300 and they lose all of it. And I'm just like, ah, that's not how you're going to, that's not how it's going to work. You're going to lose if you have that mentality. Every time I made a good trade, it's been because I bought into a project and said, I'll hold this for six months. Usually when I buy into that project within a month, I've already made my money back. So I'm like those with that it's a mentality switch. But when you go in saying I need to make money tomorrow, that's when you make wrong decisions and you buy into FOMO, you buy a project, you know, you probably shouldn't because well, maybe, it, maybe it'll work. And that's really where people go wrong. I think. Yeah, that was a, uh... I actually have uh, like probably close to a 20K loss because of that. <laughs> I, I, uh, I saw a post, I think it was by Alex uh, on Moody Crows on Mutable X back in the day when they pumped. And uh, yeah. I'm like trying to get in, you know, I'm like, hey, I'm going to buy a bunch <laughs> of these. They were like 1.2 ETH. And I'm like, oh, I'll buy like six, seven of these. Fuck, man. They just started, kept going. I, they're not like 0 0.10 or something now. Like it's ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, that's the one thing I think that people really need to know when, you feel that FOMO. That's a time I think a lot of times you just need to take a step back and really like uh, Joe Rogan talked about it on one of his podcasts related to sex. You know, he's like, hey, man, you just need to hold off for 24 hours and if you still <laughs> feel the same way the next day. Then go for it. But just hold off. You know, I, I agree. I yeah, agree. So, it's always good to wait. So when you see people launching now uh, with their uh, NFTs, you you uh, review a lot of projects. What do you feel is the most common mistake that people make? Like, like what is the thing that they're doing wrong that causes them to go to zero? They have no backbone for their brands. My brand is so dear to my my personality and character sure. that when at some point in the in the next five years or whatever like i want to launch an empty project but i don't want to do it in the gold rush i want to wait till mm -hmm. the gold rush is over so that way when people buy, invest into me as my brand they're not doing it so they can make money tomorrow even even if i have a big name so for example if i had five hundred thousand followers or something and i dropped a project during a gold rush even the people who believe in me they're still going to try and flip probably and so i'm kind of ready for that to be yeah. over for my brand specifically um so for new projects now, I've, I've reviewed so many new ones. And within about 30 seconds, I can tell if this project is going to make more than 50 ETH in sales or not. And I'm like, I'm like 99% right on those. It's just so obvious to me when I look at the new projects. It typically has to do with them starting too early. They have no true uh, identity, I guess, the main thing. They just have a project. It's cool art, whatever. Sure. And they're like, okay, well, like whitelist. So I'm like, they're, they're, they've ran out of ideas. So one, they have no creativity. Two, there's no right. backbone behind their brand. And that's the biggest thing. Like it's NFTs, I think people, since it's a new industry, people think that NFTs and brands, the way that brand is built is different, but it's not. You can take all the same marketing tactics from Web2 yep. and just apply them. Like I'm reading a book on, I, I forget if it's in the, it's something either about, it's either about dopamine or it's about TED Talks. I think it's about TED Talks and a very specific talk where they talk about brands. And they were just saying like, you can still use those old tactics about marketing because they all literally work. If you like just using those tactics and with NFTs, I think people think they have to do things differently. And the ones that are winning right now are typically the ones with strong teams, experience. They know how to run a brand. They understand the brand and there is a brand. That's literally right. it. Like that's doodles right there. That's subducts. I mean, that's all the projects that are able to hold a little bit of value. Everyone else is tanking. I mean, literally everybody else. Like I remember um, even Doge Pound was at like four ETH or something, super overvalued at some point in the fall. Right. And I made a video and I was like, man, I can't wait to buy this project. Pause. 
at less than one ETH. And everyone was climbing all these Doge farmers was like, it'll never go under one ETH. And I'm like, yes, it will. I'm like, yes, it will. The brand is strong, but people don't understand things, uh, just like foundational basics about stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Doge Pound's at like 0.6 ETH or something the other day. It was, I think it pumped up to like 0.8 uh, yesterday. Um, but I think a lot of projects also go wrong because they don't understand fundamentals about building stuff. They don't understand fundamentals about the NFT world. A lot of companies come in, have no idea about anything with NFTs, trying to make their own NFT project. I'm like, you don't even know the world yet. Like, that's like, that doesn't even make any sense. Like, if you can't come in, if you're, for example, Chuck E. Cheese, if you want to come in and be the best game in Chuck E. Cheese, but you've never been in Chuck E. Cheese. You don't know which games perform the best. You might be like, oh, well, this game performs great in this arcade. It's like, well, it might not perform well in Chuck E. Cheese right. because of these reasons, this demographic, these kinds of people will come in. And so there's a lot of things that people got to think about. And I think people jump the gun because it's a gold rush. Yeah, that's sort of like that new Halo series that came out. I don't know. If you're, <laughs> I think you did a video. Did you do a video on it? Or mm -mm. Uh, that came out recently where... Uh, the guys were like, yeah, we didn't want to play the game because we didn't want to feel constricted to what the game was. And they made a whole series and everybody's like, you don't even understand the whole lore oh. of Halo at all. And the whole series tanked because of it. Damn. Yeah. And that's another one, lore right there. Like some projects have no lore whatsoever. They just have an idea that is good. But I'm like, yeah, but why are they going to pick your project? There's no reason. Like, I, re I reviewed a project the other day, the most in-depth white paper I've ever read in my life. I was like, wow, they really thought this through. Right. But no one's going to sign up for this because no one knows why they should. And I'm not going to, I mean, the only reason I read it is because I got paid. I'm like, it was a 40 page white paper. Why am I going to read this if I'm not being paid or there's not a very, very powerful reason for me to read this. And they hadn't, they hadn't done that marketing and that branding. That's why I said in the videos, you guys haven't done the brand work. That's going to, I don't know, it, like you have to have both. You can't just have one and then not really focus on the other one. I think when you do it right, when I really look at marketing an NFT project, there needs to be something you know, a USP or unique sell, uh, sales proposition, unique angle that separates it. But there also needs to be a storyline behind it that the people resonate with that say, when they buy it, they're like, this is fucking me, dude. Mm -hmm. I This is the reason I identify with this. I love this brand. This is me. It, and the picture doesn't matter. It's more about the values of the NFT and what it represents. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think that's a, a sort of a shift we're seeing. It's getting away from PFP projects. I think that more people are starting to realize the necessity of a, a good roadmap, a good utility. And for me, um, one of the mistakes I still see with too many projects is they don't understand that the launch is when the real work starts. Like they'll launch, they'll sell out, they'll be like, fuck yeah, baby, we're <laughs> sold out, we're golden, yes, yes, and then yeah, we're done. <laughs> It's like for like yeah. 30, 45 days, and then they can't figure out why people start paper handing. And once that happens, it's over. Once you start undercutting the floor, the mint price, it starts going down. Um, so that's one of the things I really like to do for projects now is make sure past a year, it's hard to say because we don't know what's, the, the space moves so much, but you need like an idea. And especially mm -hmm. in the first like 60 to 90 days, hey, we're going to be doing this right away because you need something to create that no, I don't want to say hype, but continued buzz. You know yeah. what I mean? Because there's going to be people that do want to flip. And I here's something that's interesting I wanted to tell you. So I first had a, 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 a mentor that told me this. I used to have a 10K coaching program and I'd sell a lot of them. And people would just sort of like lurk. They wouldn't like do the work. They just sort of hang out. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? I don't want people in the program that aren't getting results. Like I'll almost give I'll give you your money back, dude. What's up? Yeah. And my mentor came and he's like, realize you can't decide how people engage with your brand. Some people want to pay the 10K and just lurk. And you just a minute ago were saying, and again, never to tell you what to do by any means, but you were saying you didn't want to do something with a gold rush because you didn't want people to flip, which I understand that. I'm launching NFT next month and it's all about diamond hands in it for the next three years. But with that frame of mind, as far as what my mentor originally told me, don't necessarily like people are going to want to flip anyway. Don't short your brand and don't put something out there that allow other people to get deeper involved with you. Because as you know, NFTs create a community within a community mm -hmm. and allow you to get a base of OG fucking Voyage Kingdom lovers right now, because that's what people do. It allows them to hold up and say, yes, baby. And I think right now in the spot you're at, I think you don't need to do 10K, but do a small like freaking we support you. We're going to be there throughout because here's the deal. If you're transparent too and are also like, hey, I'm going to use some of these funds to help me with my YouTube, to help me with this, whatever. 
people are going to give you their fucking money because they love you, bro. So just as a thing to think about, again, um, just as some advice, uh, you might want to think about that. Don't know. No, yeah, no, yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. I have, I have thought about that. That's what my two collections are right now. I have the 20 collection and the 46 or the 20, 26 and the 20 collection. Um, that's what those are. And I have, I have like in my discord, I have the, the OG roles. They have, I have the Voyager roles, the um, timers with those all play a part later down the line for me. Um, but for me, mainly, um, I, I guess I don't, um, I don't know. I'm a YouTuber first. That's, that's where my thing is. And I understand there's a difference between running a project, um, and being a YouTuber and then be, making a, a YouTube channel about running a project. And right now I'm, I'm kind of building for a YouTube, like a YouTuber is my goal. That's always been the goal. And so the NFTs that is high and that's what's now. But with NFTs, if I was to drop a collection, that boxes me in a little bit early. And so I have no problem dropping the collection. And later down the line, it might literally mean two months from now. Like, I don't know if that means two months or two years from now or 10 years from now. Um, but the way I look at the NFT world uh, is it boxes me in, in the sense that if they buy this NFT, there's a lot of people who buy in who don't quite understand the brand or they hear from a friend that they should buy into this because he's a big YouTuber and they expect things. And I don't, I guess for me, I don't really care to have that pressure on early okay. because I just started, uh, I think this was, uh, I think I started the NFT content in like September or something like that. Sure. And so for me, I think I like the freedom that I'm able to, to do whatever I want and still take those breaks. When you drop the NFT project, you're now a, a startup. And so now you don't really have that flexibility. Uh, so that's one of the things I've thought about. But I like the idea of having the OG followers. I, I really love that. And so that's what the Discord roles are for. And they and the reason I've, I've waited so long is because I I don't know. I think it's better if you can wait and wait and wait and people can appreciate the OG role without having NFT attached to it, because they're going to get the NFT attached to it. If they ever get, sure. if we ever drop the collection, they will get the OG collection. They won't have to work for it. Uh, the Voyagers will get their thing. Um, my NFT holders of my art collections will get their thing. Like they'll all get it. And I think they all know that. And so for a lot of those holders, they realize, I think that that's what it is. And my two collections that I have right now, they're expensive to get in. Like the floor is like half an ETH for one. And it's like one Ethereum nice. for the other, which is dope. And so I think the longer I can hold that, people can say, oh, these NFTs have value. And there's nothing attached to these other than they're just access keys. Right. Um, and we don't even know what that means. Unless you're, in that, unless you're in that community, you don't know what that means. And so for me, I like, it's almost like a flex to have those, those like small, small collections for a while. And again, like, yeah, like it might be two months later down the line, but when you drop that project with 10,000 or 2,000 or whatever, you got to hire a contract developer, you have to uh, a website, you have to get all these extra things. And right now, YouTube every day is a fucking grind on its own. So <laughs> I feel you, bro. I feel you. Yeah. No, dude, um, props to you, man. Like, to be honest with you, that's like uh, the probably best answer you could have sort of gave, man. Like, hey, that because um, I think that's one of the biggest problems people don't realize. And that's why a minute ago I was like, with mine, it's like three years I'm planning it out because right. when you launch an NFT, you're launching a business. Mm -hmm. It needs to be looked at it. It needs to have the structure as such. It needs to have the marketing, the team, the everything to support it, especially if you want to do a million dollar brand. If right. you just want to make, you know, 10 or 30 K or whatever, not to mind you for a lot, that's a lot of money. I'm not trying to, but if you just want to do something, that's reasonable. But you don't seem like a 10, 20. You seem like a six, seven figure type dude. You don't do shit small. Yeah, I just, uh, I want to be able to deliver that. When I drop the project, I understand that there is time limits. So you have to hit, like, if you don't do something within X amount of months, people get pissed off. And so I want people to know that about my brand. And if I've established that, hey, six months ago, I said I was going to do this. Six months later, I did it. Six months later, I did this. I told you I was going to hit this milestone. I told you I would meet this person. I did all these things. And so over like a year or two years, whatever, I've built that trust in my community. And then I can drop my collection. At that point, I'll be ready. I'll have the connections. I'll have a smart contract developer that I trust. I have a project manager I trust. And the people who know who I am without asking for their money yet. And I think that will pay off in the long term. Because I am looking at my brand as more, since I'm so early so yeah. in my own life, 23 years old, um, I realized that a lot of people started their brand, especially the guys who are winning right now, who you look at them, they've been building a brand for five, 10 years. You're like, man, they've been going forever. And a lot of people look at it like they're almost done. And I'm like, that's not even close. Like the way I'm setting up my brand foundations right now, I should be able to do my podcast until I'm like 90. So if my <laughs> brand's going to be a 90 year process, I'm like, awesome. there's no rush to do it now, I guess, especially with with money, I'm like, I'm confident that I can make money each year. Like every time I get low in money and I'm like, oh shit, like I'm, I'm getting scared. I'm like, I always have pulled through. So I'm like, there's no reason to worry about that. And so I think, I think putting off the money side and like asking for investors money as long as I can helps me in the long run. So that's kind of the way I look at it. Very cool, man. Very cool. So um, we'll wrap up here, I think. Um, but with that, 
Um, what can we do to help you out, man? Is there anything I do to help promote your brand or anything like that? Is there anything I do to, to help you out along the way? Um, man, I don't know. I, uh, I, I guess if you just encourage people to get into NFTs a lot and to remember and uh, just to tell them that NFTs aren't everything. I think when people get bogged down and especially me too, when I'm doing NFT stuff, I'm doing a bunch of commission videos. I'm trying to put all this content I'm editing. And I forget that literally right outside my window is like a world with trees and houses and people and stuff. I forget about that. And so I try to bring a good balance of that to my YouTube channel. So people are looking for YouTubers or content creators who are knowledgeable in NFTs, but have a variety of different interests and uh, I don't know, I, I just, uh, I think I'm going to be one of the bigger YouTubers in the in this space. So I think for them, it might just be smart to get in early because who knows, maybe I'll drop a project out of nowhere. Um, but I mean, I, I don't know if there's there's much to help. Maybe just uh, stay educated and try and try and like pursue education, I guess I would say, because you'll probably find me there if, you're, if that's what you're doing. Awesome, man. Yeah, that's uh, really the thing that uh, I've been blessed with. Uh, I do pretty decent people saying videos and things that I do training wise and everything. And um, I just, you know, it's really weird. I don't know if you believe the universe or God or whatever, but whatever it is, man, I believe put us in the positions we're in right now for a reason. Like this isn't happening to you just because, bro. Like this is happening to you because you're meant to do something great with your life and impact people. Now it's up to you if you actually go through and do that. You know, you the path is laid out for you. You got to be able to step over those fucking hard spots and all that stuff and be able to do it and decide to go all in. So congrats to you, man. But yeah, I, I feel that this is the way the reason we're doing this is because we're meant to do something that changes people's lives, not just our own, but other people, man. Well, you're building that stuff that you built those courses. You know, I built my archive of videos and that's that's half the reason we're here. And uh, I know there, there's some YouTube channels out there where well, they'll, they'll have a celebration for X amount of followers. And the whole video is them thanking their fans for watching. And I've always looked at it differently because I've always been like, there's some channels who blow up because they're putting stuff out there and the audience is getting more like Gary Vee is a good example. Everyone who watches Gary Vee is probably getting more than Gary Vee ever would get back from posting those videos. Gary Vee gets a lot of money from his companies that he owns. So everything he's doing is basically like icing on the case. So when like, I don't think, I mean, he always is grateful for his audience, but I would never expect Gary to make a thank you for 5 million followers. Cause like he earned those, like they got more out of it than him. Um, and so I think that's, that's the way we've kind of cultivated, like you've created these programs that people are able to go and take their life in their own hands. A lot of people who say, oh, I want to do that. I should do that. And they don't do it. But like we, we went and did the things and that's pretty much the only difference literally from potential versus results is literally doing stuff. That's really it. And so that's why I figured out early on. And so yeah, props to fucking both of us and uh, props to everyone who's listening in this live. There's a lot of people who saw the live and now oh, I'll get to that and never got to it. And they missed out on all this information. Um, and also, was there a QA and a or did we already like? Yeah, let's, those... add, let's see what's up, actually, for anybody watching. We got like five or six people watching right now. Hey, for anyone that has any questions, if you guys wanted to ask Kate anything about what he's got going on, about NFTs or anything like that, uh, please let us know and we'll jump on those. Uh, why are we waiting to wait on anything? So what do you think your next, what's going to be the next thing with your YouTube? What are you thinking of a new angle or something? Because I, that's one of the things that I always see you sort of like testing to see what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. And I test a lot of things. I think I'll just be keep testing. I honestly just, just keeping on building on the, the same series I have. Like I have one that's uh, impersonating AMT YouTubers. It's fun. It kind of gets people to, I guess the way I look at it is if I was a YouTuber and I saw NFT Nate make one, I, my thought would be, all right, when's he doing me? You know, and so I'm waiting, I'm waiting on that to just continue to build. So I'm just excited to keep going on. So I'm excited for a full-time sponsor at some point um, to feel a little bit more grounded and being like, okay, I can, I know this much money is coming in every single month, like guaranteed I'm good. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm actually looking forward to some more stability. And that only comes with time on YouTube. Like as, as my brand grows, as the channel keeps growing, YouTube at some point will give me my monetization. I've been waiting for like six months for them to respond. It's been processing for six months of I don't really? know what's taking them so long to say yes. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So it just takes forever. So honestly, I'm just looking forward to having a little bit more stability. YouTube's a very unstable uh, career and I've had a very unstable past two years. So I'm ready for like just a little bit of stability, a little bit of tranquility so I can kind of relax and not have to be on like fight or flight so often. So that would be great. So maybe that's something that we could help you. Maybe somebody else watching here could do help you with that or something. What are you looking for? Like what would that 
what would that look like? Like I, I watch your show course and I've seen you, you're, you're so, you're like, so if anybody would like to, yeah. you know, like, but what would that look like? What would you, what would you want? I mean, like monetary wise, just curious. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we had one work with Subdocs NFT projects very early mm-hmm. on, um, but they wanted to pursue more of a web three style of partnerships. We, we took off the monetary bit and we just changed it up a little bit. Um, and so honestly, I'm looking more for, I'm not really looking, I mean, so, I mean, if there's a web three partnership out there where a project maybe wants to say like one, one example would be when I was partnered up with, with Subdocs for Ugerverse and I'm making daily uploads, you know, one to three times a, bit, a day usually. Mm-hmm. And I'm mentioning Subdocs or something for every single video kind of keeps that project in mind for all the people watching and they constantly are seeing the name and so it keeps a lot of projects relevant right um but i'm also looking more into like the web 2 style the the social media angle of hey this this youtuber is, is going to be bigger he's gro- every single month is growing um he, we have a product like i, I always joke with celsius energy because i think right. it makes a lot of sense yeah. i also love celsius energy but i'm always like right. it makes sense like if i had this thing in the corner just propped up right okay. here i drink them anyway it's like people say, oh, like I fuck with Kate. He also has a healthy lifestyle. He tries to do all these things. He likes Celsius energy, it's zero calories. So all these things, like it's great. So why not buy that? And I think those kind of partnerships make sense. So a brand that fucks with my, my lifestyle, fucks with my brand a little bit, and they think they can help, whether whether or not that's like a gaming mouse or a keyboard or whatever it is, I think some kind of monetary compensation for that is definitely what I'd be looking for. So a very standard like influencer package, I guess you could say. Uh, is probably looking for just because that that is somewhat stable because you can usually sign those like I've I've worked in the fitness industry before and so I kind of know how that stuff works a little bit there's usually contracts three to six months or whatever and at least can buy you time and NFTs at least I know three months is a very long time like if I can secure yeah so like for me like when I think about when I'm moving out soon and I'm okay if I can just like set aside like 10 grand that's like six months worth of expenses right there that I don't have to worry about. And six months, I mean, my whole YouTube channel can be summed up in six months, basically for NFT. So I'm like, six months buys me a lot of time. If I can just set aside 10,000 and not use it for mm-hmm. NFTs or something like that, that could really, really help me out. Um, so, so yeah. So if someone could came in and they were the right, the right person, right brand, everything, 10k would definitely set you up and you'd feel comfortable doing oh, oh i was using 10k as an example for like a six month thing i don't know what the monetary per, per oh, month would be uh, but just yeah any company who too. yeah any company that, that would make sense for me that that would uh i don't know just be a, a good partnership I, i'm looking to partner up long term with someone i mean the, the short-term commission videos are cool or whatever um i like doing them it's it's good for me because i get to I get to stay in the know of what's going on in the new stuff. I get to see where the new project founders heads are at, where they're looking, if they're creative or not, what they're looking for. And so it keeps me in the loop, which is great. But having a long-term partnership is always something I've wanted. I think every kid has always wanted to be sponsored by Gymshark or something like that. Sure. So it's still like a childhood dream in that sense yeah. as well. But yeah, I think a long-term partnership should be great. It, it makes sense to my brand because everything about my brand is long-term. All my vision stuff is five, 10 years out. And I'm like, yeah, it'd be, dope. it'd be the best thing would be like Steve Cook partnered with Jim Shark when he was like, I don't know, like seven years ago or something. And they're still partnered up because everything they have are aligned with each other. So they're both going the same direction. They're both winning. So they're both like, why not partner up? It just makes sense. So that's the type the style of partnership I'm looking for. There you go. So Jim Shark, if anybody's watching, you know, <laughs> Jim Shark, come on, Jim Shark. Go, you know, let's do it. But if anybody else, uh, we got a lot of influencers and people with a little bit of coin in their pocket. Uh, if anybody aligns with Kate and wants to help him out, hey, reach out to him. Um, with that, is there anything else you want to talk about, NFTs or anything else before we wrap up today? Hmm. Um, I think I think a lot of people ask ask me um, what the what they should be doing in the NFT space. I think when you get into the NFT space, everyone we all feel this communal aspect where you, you feel part of these communities, you jump in this community, you really like it. You jump into that one, you don't really like it so much. And people get used to the idea of, hey, we're kind of all in this together. We're all trying to make money, blah, blah, blah. But if you're not building or part of a team, you are truly still kind of on your own. It's still you against everyone else. Everyone, while there is community, until there's a bloodbath, then everyone's telling you to fuck off. And so it's a little right. bit different. And when the project's going to shit, don't, no one wants to ask you how your day was. They're telling you to get out of the project. And so I think for people who want to get in this space and really like this communal aspect, they really like being part of something because that's what this is. If you are in here in 2020, 2021, or 2022, you're you're early to 99% of people in the mainstream. You're kind of late as far as people in NFTs, <laughs> but as far as the mainstream, you're very early. So I'm like, if you have a, a vision, you want to be part of something, this is literally the moment that you should be, that you've always been looking for. This is like that, hey, 
uh, someone tell me this is it because this is literally it. This is the time where you can DM a project founder, get in yes. early on a project, and just be a mod. And now you're like, hey, I modded for this project. I can mod in your project. Now, look, you got four gigs. You're in with all these people. You can start to build your own brand. And Mikey G, one of my friends, he uh, modded for Hate Beast, and he just got in by DMing the guy. He's got all these connections now. He's built his own brand around it because people like him. They're like, oh, you're a cool mod, but you're also a cool guy. And then I connected with him. He connected with all the people, found out later in the middle of our podcast, he's the guy who did the Geico commercial, like 15% or more. And I was like, wait, you're behind that? He was like, yeah, yeah, I was in charge of the whole thing. And I was like, holy shit. And so you meet all these crazy, crazy people. And it's just a, it's a really wild and crazy world. Like the other day, do you know the show Rugrats? Yeah, yeah. That the creator of that show just followed me on Twitter. And I was like, whoa, what the fuck? (laughs) And so it's just crazy stuff can happen in NFT where you can put out a tweet to Elon Musk. You might read it. You might like your tweet. You know, I've had that really happened with Tony with Journey Crypto. I put out a tweet. He put out a tweet. I responded. I guess he had seen me respond a couple other times. I think he saw one of my videos and he followed me on Twitter. And I was like, oh, oh wow. Holy shit. And so you can truly build something for yourself. You can build yourself in a communal aspect or in your own self. If you can learn something about something specific and start mm-hmm. jumping into Twitter spaces, dropping what information you know and make it sound like you know what you're doing, faking it till you come yeah. till you are it basically. Um, or faking it or you become it or whatever the saying is, it works in this empty world. If you can speak, if you can figure out how to deliver information in a good way and you do know some stuff, hopefully don't, hopefully you don't go in pretending you know something you really don't like learn some stuff. You can go in, you can really make a name for yourself. This is literally one of the only times in history where you're early on an entire industry. That's hard. That's really hard to replicate. That doesn't happen very often. Yeah, I think um, anybody, as much as it might feel like you're late or whatever, even for Kate saying for the people that are in the know, um, you're still super early. Like, I mean, there's going to be, I've said this many times, uh, NFTs and the whole Web3 space is going to make more millionaires and multiple billionaires than yeah. anything in the history of man. Anything? And jobs, more yeah. jobs. There's jobs. You can get a job, be a community manager. Like uh, at some point I want to hire uh, my community manager right now. I want him to be on my payroll at some point when I can. And mm-hmm. I'm like, that's what it can be a job. His job is to like, I don't even know what that would like, how you describe it, like just to be cool and like be in Discord. Like that's the way the job, I'm like, what? <laughs> other world is that thing you know and everyone always says it's too saturated it's never too saturated there's always a project that comes out of nowhere there's always uh, like what's his name uh kamsa chimaev the ufc fighter came out of fucking nowhere now he's number three ranked in the world that doesn't happen often but it can happen and everyone always says you're too late to youtube if you didn't start youtube in in 2014 you're too late it's like well there's a youtuber that makes it every single day and that's in every industry ever there's always a new person that brings some you know fresh uh breath of fresh air and changes the game and now everyone's got to adapt and then everyone's oh it's too saturated then someone else comes from left field and does something else and then everyone goes over there and that's just the way of, of like life i guess yeah i think that's a um you know it's it's you're never too late to plant that tree type thing and yeah. uh, just realize that no everybody no matter what started at zero like mm-hmm. came to one point was like i mean you know he was just a regular dude that, i mean he's a regular dude now but you know <laughs> what i mean he was just Regular dude that had a dream. And now, look, he's got a YouTube channel. He's got a following. He's going to get sponsored by Celsius. He's going to get all these guys that are going to be helping him to fund his voyage here. So, yeah, man, um, I think that the key is something you said at the very beginning was, like, you know, when you're prepared and you've studied and you're ready for the opportunity to present itself, you know, it's being ready because – yes opportunity is going to become but it's being able to step through that door when it presents itself exactly it's a difference between uh the people that succeed and the people that don't that's that's exactly it. With, with my with my collection when i told you that story when my collection sold out the only reason that helped me is because yes it was cool i made a couple thousand dollars off that like dope but that would have been it if i hadn't prepared the night before which is wild the night before that happened i, I called my friend i had him set up a discord for me I put up all my socials, made everything look like an NFT creator, photographer, traveler person. I wasn't going to be YouTuber at that point yet. So I was just, I was set up to be like, hey, this guy's an NFT collection. Cool. Go to his page. Oh, this guy has, he's a collector. He's a traveler. He does all these things. He's got his Discord too. And it's because of that, that I got my first six people in my Discord. And then we literally built it from six people to like 2000 or whatever it is now. And I'm like, that's fucking wild. Because if I hadn't prepared that night, that that opportunity would have come and gone and it just would have fizzled over. I never would have connected with Fidel after that. It would have been, hey, thanks for buying out. You're welcome. Move on, like gone. And so I think that that whole yeah, setting yourself up to get lucky. Luck is never like pure luck. I mean, very rarely is do you just win the lottery for no reason kind of thing. Like most people get lucky. Like uh, the streamers, what's his name? Tfue. 
Tifu, who uh, blew up over Fortnite, he's like, yeah, but I was a professional gamer for two years. He's like, I had already right. built up a following who already liked me. And then I just happened to be there right when Fortnite took off. And that's what really launched me. And people think, oh, he just picked up a video game and played Fortnite and got lucky. I'm like, no, that's never how anything works. Um, and like one of my best, one of my favorite quotes ever came from the movie Interstellar. Have you seen it? Yes. Interstellar with Matthew McConaughey. And he said uh, it was when he was trying to, I think it was like get his ship to lock into the docking station. And it was mm-hmm. almost there. And the rope. But was like, you can't do this. This is literally impossible. Don't do this. It's not going to work. It's, it's impossible. It can't be done. And he goes, he goes, it doesn't matter. It's necessary. Something like that. And I remember just him saying, like, it's not impossible. It's necessary. It doesn't matter if it's impossible. We have to do it. And I remember hearing that. And I was like, fuck. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. That's my favorite quote, probably of all time. Yeah, I think uh, just in wrapping up one thing to leave everybody with, that, yeah. like uh, being uncomfortable is like not only OK, but necessary. I think like. You alluded to this at the very beginning that one of the reasons why you took off on your your voyage or your voyage was to uh, you felt too comfortable. You got too much complacent in your spot, and I think that's very easy for people to do nowadays: is get complacent, keep doing the same thing, um, but realize that if you're going to become something great or achieve what you want, you have to become uncomfortable. No one's going exactly. to get those lofty goals or achieve that new evolution of yourself um, by staying comfortable. And that's hard. It's hard, man, because uncomfortable sucks until you realize the benefits that you get from it. Well, you can't even be cool until you're uncomfortable. I was a loser my whole life. And I remember literally being in my room saying, I I can't wait to be on Logan Paul's podcast when you're Gabby's podcast. And I was like, wait, they're never going to invite me because I am not, I have not done anything remotely cool. And to be cool, you have to do something that is hard to do and that's usually putting yourself to something uncomfortable so i love that very cool brother well thanks so Hi. much for being on today again uh reach out for cade at was it um what's your actual your, your youtube channel joy's kingdom or is it cade it's, yeah if you type in cade bergman joy's kingdom will pop up i have both i think in the username for for youtube and then on twitter it's just cade bergman one word um yeah that's, that's pretty much it you can you can find it if you type it in i have a unique ish name so it'll probably come up type in nft is kate bergman or something <laughs> yeah and i'll be sure to put the links down in the description Thank and everything so thanks a lot for being on brother i appreciate it hopefully everybody found good uh, advice had a good time learning kate is and uh, about his voyage to get here mm-hmm. and with that we're gonna wrap it up so oh, yeah everybody we are out of here peace, peace.